Okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much for being for being that brave and uh, sitting through the entire day and the lightning talks. Are I really appreciated that you are uh, spending your uh, Sunday evening with us. Uh, my name is Stefan Schneider. I'm with Sun. Uh, I work with the group who is taking care for our software vendors. We are 180 engineers worldwide. We have 30 engineers who work exclusively with open source communities. Uh, as I told you, it, I'm with Sun. It's big fun being here. Sun is a kind of uh, the biggest and oldest startup uh, probably in the IT industry. Sun means Sun, uh, Stanford University Network. Uh, we work in fairly chaotic virtual teams. I have Patrick Finch here. He is uh, stand up. <laughs> he, he is basically fr from the Indiana project. And um, I, uh, I, I, I took the charge in giving the presentation. And before I forgot, this is a talk about our pro Project Indiana, which is based on a live CD. I brought two of them with me, two previews too, and a real neat uh, small book about uh, using our Open Solaris. I never saw it before. I got, two, I got two of them. I kept one on my own. <laughs> so uh, whoever is interested in, just pick it up. So time to speed up. Um, OK. Um, Solaris is, is a fairly mature operating system. Our Sun has a fairly long tradition for more than 20 years in working in a kind of an open environment with sharing. This happened in the 80s and 90s through licensing things through standardization. Our, it changed in the late 90s through things like Java community. And our, nowadays, our collaboration happens through completely different means like our open source development. Uh, our Solaris operating system is a real data center carrier crate operating system which allows you to do things like exploiting resources from servers up to 144 CPUs. Solaris has features in which allow you to take such a ser server, keep all the applications running, and basically swap all CPUs, all memory, all disk, and all network cards uh, step by step, including power supplies. The only thing you can't switch are while, while the operating system is working is the passive backplane. But if you do it right and if you don't screw it up, you can basically change the entire hardware. This is a kind of a carrier crate data center operating system which has a lot of value in and uh, folks put lots of energy into it over quite a period. Fact is, we realized a kind of uh, some three, four years ago, uh, we have to do something different in order to grow the community and to grow uh, the adoption. And uh, we have to do something different in order to be able to expand in new markets like embedded systems, education, government. So what, done, what, what Sun did at this time was a kind of a fairly brave move. Uh, we basically opened Solaris up with the brand name Open Solaris. This was two and a half years ago. It's under a CDDL license. This is an OSI approved uh, software license which allows you to do pretty much what you want to do with, uh, with, with our so uh, sources. And what was not that visible to the world was we have been opening our development process, and this is quite a challenge, because around a 1,000 people have to change the way how they work, how they collaborate, and uh, how they build software. This was quite uh, painful for Sun, and, uh, but at the end of the day, it was a pretty good exercise in trying to become more transparent, and we were still working on it in order to become even more transparent because everyone is better thing benefiting from it. So this initiative is two and a half years old. We saw some pretty good adoption in the last two and a half years. Some people bought, or, or some people created distros like Schilling, or, uh, Schilix, and uh, we saw quite a number of contributions, especially in the more front-end stuff. Uh, hello. Oops. Um, the, the, the major difference between the typical Linux approach is that it's important for us that we have an open source uh, track where everyone can uh, have a look at the software modified and that we have a, commer a commercial enterprise track called Solaris because there's a fairly large market out there of people who rely on this kind of enterprise Solaris and our vision of the future is that we have a kind of a fairly quickly evolving ecosystem 
with all kinds of application still being based on binary compatible uh, operating system cores, no matter if they come in a commercial operating system like uh, Solaris for enterprise customers, or if it comes in, an, in a fast track, uh, quickly evolving uh, open Solaris, open source environment. Uh, pity is, as I already told you, uh, our Solaris is really a kind of a data center-like operating system, and uh, we realized in the last two and a half years that many uh, potential developers like you here coming from universities or working on open source uh, projects had problem in adopting our technology because we haven't been really strong on the desktop. We didn't make it exceptionally easy for people to, to build their stuff. And uh, this didn't matter for corporate developers in the past because they had the time to invest in trainings and we realized we had to do something and this was why Project Indiana has been kicked off. The key idea of Indiana is really to make this big fat 4.7 gigabyte DVD of Solaris much lighter, simpler and create uh, a simple nucleus, a core, which is as small as possible and enable an environment where you have integrable components, where you don't have to ship all the uh, four, six, seven gigabyte at a time when you install your operating system, but make it a kind of smaller, more agile, and easier and faster to download and uh, simpler to install. Uh, we are doing, we are planning to do this by having a small core operating system which fits on a normal CD with 600 megabytes. So uh, if you're lucky, you can download this thing within 20 minutes at home. Or if you would do this with Solaris Developer Express coming on a DVD, it's probably a long evening with four or five hours. Uh, in order to make it a fully usable operating system, we are changing our, our package installation technology from uh, away from our old System 5 release for our packaging technology, which served us well over almost 15 years. But you have to keep in mind when we started using it, we had a tenth of the projects, uh, a tenth of the packages we have today and we simply couldn't imagine on how many patches we will have to issue on top of these packages. So our project in Yana is using a packaging system called our IPS, which is network-based. You put your packages on, on public repository and just download with a, few, uh, with a few commands the things you need to build your own environment. The second th thing we learned is that our corporate developers had no problems with our operating system, but people who are developers for our other platforms like Linux, Windows, are typically just a kind of casual administrators for Solaris, and they had problems in uh, getting our operating system uh, up and running. So we invested in new installation technology, which makes things really straightforward to install, and we were putting the GNU tools uh, in the default uh, search path which should make life easier for people who are coming from university, from Linux background, and uh, allow them to get user experience as they, are, uh, as they know it from Linux. Uh, if you're a traditional enterprise customer, don't panic. You can operate our Open Solaris as well with standard search paths, and your look and feel will be uh, as you had it before. Um, these two key features are hopefully making Open Solaris available to, to, to a much larger audience than before because we made it significantly easier and faster to download it and operate it. Uh, but still, we don't want to lose the, the old virtues and the features which we introduced with our, our Open Solaris and Solaris 10 because we want to be able to use our advanced file system, ZFS, the SETA file system, to do all kinds of cool gadgets like, for example, rolling back an upgrade uh, which went south and uh, doesn't do you any good, or having a real good integration of the AMP stack, uh, which was documented lately by our acqui acquisition or our intended acquisition of, of MySQL. And last but not least, uh, we, we worry about binary compatibility. We want to stay binary compatible, and we have tools like DTrace, which help you analyzing complex software stacks at full runtime or uh, our virtualization technologies like zones and our new modern system management facilities. So this kind of new uh, packaging of Solaris is basically the second stage of our open Solaris move. Two and a half years ago, we uh, released basically our sources more or less at, as is to the world with our 
project in Vienna, we will soon have an installation CD which will make your life much easier. And this is a perfect start for someone who wants to build software for this open source operating system. Uh, hopefully soon, as, 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 as I learned from the guys from Indiana, we'll have an, uh, a, a real shipping RSCD. As of today, we have a preview too, which was already fairly good. And this thing will consist out of a single CD image, uh, which you can use as a live CD to figure out how OpenSolaris is working. And you can use it to install the real operating system. And it will consist of a kernel operating of the kernel system libraries and some system utilities. This is a kind of a bare bones environment, which is just a your kind of launch pad to do the real thing. Uh, the network based package management system is supposed to help you uh, compose uh, your installation as you want to do it and get all the uh, packages, the open source packages, or your own packages from the web as you need them. A real step forward is making the setup file system the default file system for root. Uh, this is something fairly brave since we had UFS uh, for forever <laughs> as our root file system. And uh, if you don't want to screw something up as an operating system, one of them is having a corrupt root file system. Uh, this setup file system is completely new. It has integrated volume managers, snapshot capabilities, and uh, uh, a real huge scalability data integrity from end to end. And this is a kind of a foundation which is there to last for the next 10, 10 15 years. Uh, the message here is, if you have been hesitant in, in writing software or, or using uh, the OpenSolaris technology, this is a kind of now the point where we have a complete new infrastructure for you with ZFS as a boot file system, GNU tools in the standard search path, and uh, a brand new package, uh, network packaging system, which is there as well to last for the next uh, five to 10 years. And this is a kind now the second wave where it's getting hopefully uh, significantly easier to uh, deploy your application or as we are foreseeing it to basically build your own distro. Uh, within the end of this year, we'll have uh, internet-based repositories with standard software from Sun this is stuff we, we tested uh, in a very intensive way where we know everything is perfectly coordinated. We have repositories from opensolaris.org where we have contributions from other community members where we can't worry the quality. And we are hoping to see that people put their own software repositories out and use all these so sources to, uh, to build your, their own individual mix of distros to build appliances, NAS filers, whatever you can imagine, to build uh, their own custom distributions. And therefore, we really consider this being kind of a foundation which will allow people in the future really to, uh, to, to compile and build their own software recipes and their own configurations, which are hopefully much leaner and faster and easier to maintain, uh, like this big, bloated uh, OpenSolaris, which we have today. Um, as I already stated, Project Indiana is a kind of happening in the public. You can get the uh, developer preview from the URL up here. Uh, just download the ISO image, burn your CD, or boot it up, uh, play around with it. Uh, the packaging is now working. You can install the first packages from the internet, and we hope to do significant improvement in the next uh, two to three months before we have the final release. Uh, let us know how you like it, join our mailing lists, file bugs if you see that that stuff isn't working, write some code to it, and uh, simply join our community and the project because we're really welcoming your participation. This already leads to the end. I have one minute to go. Two things I want you to take home with you are OpenSolaris just got a major revamp in usability uh, watch what we are doing with our Project Indiana. We are in, in several months, we are really releasing a complete new environment with great, which will make it much easier for you to use our software and give you the chance to do stuff for university, but as well grow into mission critical stuff like our uh, deployments for telco customers finance because there are uh, the traditional dollars is very popular. The second thing I want you to take home with you is 
Sun is not just a California-based computer company. Sun has a strong engineering presence in Europe. We have 100 colleagues uh, working in our Hamburg o uh, office on open office. We just gained 22 uh, colleagues in Stuttgart working on VirtualBox. We have uh, quite some guys, I think uh, two to 300 working on NetBeans in Prague and uh, two dozen of colleagues in Regensburg working on the Crit engine, which is open source as well. I think I forgot the OpenJDK colleagues in St. Petersburg. They didn't fit anymore on the map. And most likely we'll be, be able to welcome colleagues from MySQL in, in Sweden soon. Our guys, open source engineering is in the UK, uh, Amersfoort, Netherlands, and in Heidelberg. So send me an email or talk to us at our booth. Uh, and thank you for your attention and have a safe trip back home.